Good morning, Social Media Breakfast Madison. We're so glad to have you all here. Uh, I have a few announcements before we kick off as folks filter in and find their seats. So our first order of business, my name is Sarah Hetke. I am a board member for Social Media Breakfast Madison. In a few slides, you will get to meet the rest of our board. Um, but I want to get to know all of you. So for all of you who have been to one of our events before, raise your hand. Oh, yes. All right. Online counts. Yep, absolutely. And how about uh, first time? All right. We've got a good mix of folks, a lot of first timers in the crowd. So welcome. We're glad that you're here with us. Uh, so a little bit about us. Uh, we are a, a nonprofit group. We host social media and digital marketing events for the Madison community. And uh, we're delighted to be hosting those in person. Thank you for joining us. And we do have a virtual option as well uh, for those who uh, want that. Uh, we do meet once a month, the third Wednesday of each month. So go ahead and just mark that as recurring on your calendar so that you can join us. Uh, and we always meet here at Dream Bank uh, for our live events. But we also do have some virtual uh, events throughout the year. And like I mentioned earlier, we do have the live stream each month as well. So like I mentioned, these are my fellow board members. We are a volunteer board. And these are all of the folks that make sure that our events happen along with all of our great volunteers. So if you're a board member or a volunteer, give a little wave. All right, yes, say thank you to all of those folks. If you have not met them yet, yes, yeah, yeah, let's give them, give them a round of applause. <laughs> and if you have not met uh, one of them yet, feel free to go up and introduce yourself. So you can connect with us, has, hashtag SMBMAD, or in social media, Madison Masterminds. That is our Facebook group. Uh, if you have social media or digital marketing questions, pose them in there. I know I personally have, and I've gotten a lot of helpful responses back. If you find an article that's interesting that you think that fellow social media marketers should know about, post it in there. Uh, if you have job opportunities, we have a thread for that. So it's a great way to keep the conversation going after our monthly events. Our nonprofit spotlight this month, uh, each month we highlight a local nonprofit and give them a shout out. Uh, so this month it is Forward Service Corporation. They provide employment and training services that help people transform their lives from being unemployed to having a career of their dreams. Um, if you are here with Forward Service Corp, give a little wave. Yep, in the back, those three, yeah. <laughs> so make sure to stop by and talk to them about all the great work that they're doing. And with that, I want to make sure that we recognize all of our sponsors. Uh, they each contribute in an invaluable way to us to make sure that these events happen. So let's give another round of applause for all of our sponsors. And with that, I'm going to invite up Andy from Dream Bank to talk a little bit about the space that we're in and about uh, what they've got going on. Thanks so much, Sarah. And good morning, Social Media Breakfast. Shout out to Sal's for the uh, French toast today. I really enjoyed that, yeah. Um, been crushing it with the breakfast. So my name is Andy Frisky. I am a senior sponsorships, partnerships, and events coordinator here at Dream Bank, and always look forward to these, these Wednesday mornings with all of you lovely folks. For those of you who aren't familiar about uh, Dream Bank, would love to share with you a little bit about what we do, why we exist. Um, so here at American Family Insurance, we believe that communities are stronger and the future is brighter when people are actively pursuing their dreams. And that's why this place was created just a little over 11 years ago at this point. We're an inspirational community destination and virtual experience that's dedicated to dreamers everywhere. Our offerings are designed to help you celebrate the dream journey, overcome obstacles, and to stay motivated. Um, so how that essentially breaks down is uh, we host 15 free events a month all through the lens of personal and professional development. Anything ranging from business-related topics, DE and I work. We honor specific culturally and historically relevant months and moments throughout the year. So we've got some really good Black History Month programming um, and then teeing up into Women's History next month in March. Um, so keep an eye out for that uh, on our website, ampfam.com forward slash dream bank. But in addition to the events that we host, we also function as a drop-in co-working space. So I had a lovely chat with Justin this morning in our, in our co-working space uh, on the red tables there. But uh, we're open Tuesday through Thursday, 9 to 5 their first come first serve. So if you're looking for a quietish place to work, uh, maybe a central location to meet folks, that's really what that space is meant to, to represent. And then all the way at the back of the space, we have a very robust and interactive exhibit, always rooted in positive psychology, 
meant to embody some of the beliefs and values of the company. The theme with this one is building your dream. Been around for a little bit now, but if you haven't had a chance to explore it, I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, a lot of design thinking concepts in that uh, pertaining to dream pursuit. Um, but yeah, my coworker Jenna right there in the blue sweater too. If uh, you have any questions about the space, please go ahead and ask myself or Jenna. But with that, I will kick it back to Sarah. All right, thank you, Andy. And thank you, Dream Bank, for hosting us and our events. Um, now we're going to invite up Sal's. And uh, while she's coming up, a round of applause for that breakfast this morning. Woo! All right, normally I have a wing woman, Gina. She is unfortunately away at another breakfast because of all of you. Um, so that is where she is at. So I will be doing this solo today. Um, I am the marketing manager, I'm an administrative manager for Sal's, um, all three locations. We've got one in Sun Prairie, one in Monona, and one just across the street, just behind this building. Um, we're going to do something a little fun for all of you. We're going to do a gift card giveaway, um, but I'm not just going to hand them to anybody. We're going to do a little bit of trivia, so hopefully you know all about Sal's. Um, <laughs> if you don't, there are some handy dandy little sheets that do have a couple of pointers for you. Um, and if you don't win a gift card today, I also have $10 vouchers on all of your seats that you will be able to use. Um, so we'll start with an easy one. Um, what year was Salvatore's founded? 2011. Yes, it was. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and then the next question I have for all of you is how many locations do we have? Three. Three? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. Yes. Know. Yeah. I'm a good listener. All right, and then the last question. We do things that are not just in the restaurant. We sell to places. What do we sell? outside of the restaurant, all the way in the back? Frozen we do, yes, frozen pizza. Yeah. All right, that is all of the time that I will take up. I hope to see you all in the restaurants over the next coming months. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana, and thank you, Sal's, for that breakfast this morning. And since we're a social media group, uh, I hope that all of you have those vouchers, and especially those of you who got those gift cards. So you better give them a shout out on social media as you're enjoying that delicious pizza. And now we know Adriana, who's going to be watching all of those shout outs that come through. All right, now I'm going to invite up Gray uh, to talk about Big Share Wisconsin, or the Big Share, sorry. Hey everybody. Uh, yeah, you may have met me before already. I am part of the board, um, but that's kind of my secret identity. I am also <laughs> on the board of uh, Community Shares Wisconsin and have been for a couple of years. Um, this is 10 years that we've been doing the Big Share Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, you got me saying it. Doing the Big Share. You can find it at thebigshare.org. Um, and it is an annual event, and it doesn't just raise money for one nonprofit, it raises it for over 70 nonprofits, social, mm -hmm. environmental, and justice groups. Um, social Media Breakfast Madison has been affiliated with this group almost all 10 years because a huge part of the big share is social media based. And to let you know how, what kind of a, um, a reach that is going to have, the current goal for the big share is gonna be on Tuesday, March 5th to raise $800,000 in that one day. And it's a share-based thing. So some nonprofits, the big share gives them all of their budget. They earn it all in that one day. And that lets us have everybody teaming up together to help out all of these other nonprofits that may not have the staff, the time, the resources to do that. So that's why this exists. That's why Community Shares Wisconsin exists. Um, you can join us online. It's like an old school telethon, but it's on YouTube. So you're going to have performances and speakers and videos. Uh, my, I work at the RCC Sexual Alliance Resource Center. We're going to have a few videos on there. And if you want to really get involved and take your advocacy to the next level and help out 70 different nonprofits at the same time in one day, you can be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, which, by the way, is great practice for social media engagement. Um, and you can find out how to do that on thebigshare.org. So thank you very much. And thank you, Social Media Breakfast Madison. You're welcome.
<laughs> oh, you need these, don't you? I hope our photographer got that Superman reveal uh, mm -hmm. recorded somewhere. All right, and we're winding down our, our announcements before we get on with the main event, but stay tuned, all of you who are here in person, because we are going to give away a Yola's Cafe gift card at the end of our event today. So uh, we're not going to reveal how you're going to win it yet. You'll have to stay tuned to find out how you win that. Uh, and with that, we are on to our main event for the day, what SEO looks like in the age of AI. So Egan, I'll invite you to come up and kick us off. All right, thanks so much. I think the clicker from you. Everybody, how we doing? Can you hear me in-house? All right, all good faith? It's good to be back. I don't know how many times this has been for social media breakfast for me. It's been many over the years, so it's always great. It's always great to be here. It's just, um, I'm so happy, I'm so excited. Let's get to it. So, we were talking about what SEO looks like in the age of AI. Yeah. So, a couple topics today. How does Google determine organic search rankings? Uh, how do SEO experts improve SEO, right? How is AI changing the field as we speak, right? And how can we improve our SEO using AI? And of course, how is this changing? How do we keep up with everything? We'll talk about all this and more. So why has it been so important to rank on Google? And it's not just rhetorical. Go ahead and shout out the answers. Money. Money. Thank you, James. People know who you are. That's good. Also, people find what they need. Dan, nice. Find quicker. Bill, find it quicker. I like it. They find you first. Yeah. Find you first. That's good. On the money thing, James, how does the, how does this translate to money? Uh, visibility for your business, which means leads for your business. Visibility for your business, leads for your business, ultimately sales for your business, right? All right. I think those are all good answers. So one reason just to think about, so for some of us who were here before Google, right, and used the internet before Google, that's not always how we search. That's not always how we found things, right? And this is where we're sitting at right now as of 2024. So on desktop, they're at about 82% of search share. So these little lines down here, <laughs> these ones, that's, uh, that's Bing. And that's Yahoo. And DuckDuckGo is not doing too shabby down there either. But you can see Google owns the lion's share, right? And when we go to mobile, it's even higher. It's like, this is, this is what people use. And then, okay, we're using Google. Why do we need to be on the top? So this is click-through rate. So on the y-axis, we have click-through rate. So your clicks divided by your impressions. Your impression is you showed up on a Google results page. A click is someone actually tapped it, right? And then your ranking position is what spot are you, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And you can really see spot number one gets the lion's share of the clicks. For me, I like to turn it sideways because it's like, this is what we're saying. So if I Google for AI SEO tools, right? It's like that very top one, all else equal, really gets the most. And Google's always adding new SERP, search engine result page features. I think SERP is kind of a silly one. I try to skip that one. We get, we get into all kinds of jargon and acronyms and everything really quickly. And I try to, I, I, you can stop me at any time, but I always try to like bring it up a level. Let's, let's speak normal people language, right? But Google's adding new features here, like people also ask and related to searches and things like that. And you'll see YouTube in there and you'll even see, you'll see YouTube videos in there and you'll, has anybody seen podcasts, audio podcasts coming up in Google? You do and will, so watch for that. So um, this is just another way to look at that same information and there's different kinds of searches. So sometimes people already know you, they know the big share and they Google it and then they find the big share website, right? Or they know Social Media Breakfast Madison, they Google it and they find it. That's a branded search. And what's almost disheartening is that number one spot for a branded search gets about 34% click-through rate, which is kind of low when you think of, that means two thirds of people that search for your brand aren't even necessarily clicking on you. Maybe they're getting the information they need right from their result page, but that's the idea on that. And then non-branded is really why we do SEO, right? So in my case, my company, we offer digital marketing services, marketing strategy, all these things, you know, SEO services, Google ad services, right? And that would be a non-branded search so when people search for phrases like that, that's when I want to come up. If I'm number one, I'll, you know, on average, they're getting about 24% of the clicks. Did I get that right? Yeah, non-branded. So, and then what about commercial versus informational? So we have different things that we search for on Google, right? 
So sometimes we're looking to buy something, we're looking for a particular pair of shoes, a particular computer adapter, a particular hat, whatever it is, right? And then sometimes it's just informational. I just need to know what time it is in Singapore right now. I just need to know whatever it is, you know, when, when is that next social media breakfast event, right? So there's sort of different types of queries. And what's interesting is the good news is commercial number one spot gets 31% of the clicks if someone's looking to buy. So if they're, if they're trying to buy something or they're trying to hire someone for services, that top spot gets many more clicks, right? Bad news is as soon as we're getting down here, right? There's only 10, there's only 10 results on the, on the normal page. It's like, by the time we're at the end of page one, we got nothing. By the time we're on page two, nobody's seeing us at all, right? That's why SEO is important. And then the informational searches, it's more like 18%. And part of the reason, as we'll see, might be that Google is just serving up the answer right on that result page, right? So why has it been so important to rank on Google? Just to sum it up, most people use Google as a search engine. There actually were other options at one point, and there are other options, but most people just use Google. That's kind of the default, right? People really only search when they're looking for something. We talked about they may be looking for a brand. They may be looking for you know, a certain thing. They're, it may be a non-branded search they're looking for, or it may be informational versus commercial, right? So they're looking for something to buy. They want to know where there's good pizza on East Washington, and we know that's sales, right? Or it's like, I just I need some information. of What, what kind of events are going on? What are, what's something I could bring my kids to? in Madison, like it's like it's that sort of informational search, it could be different. And then we see most people click at the top, most people do not make it to page two, and they certainly aren't even clicking even the bottom half of page one. So that is why SEO is important, that's probably why you're here. That's, that's probably a lot of review for you. All right, so would you like to know how to get more buyers to find you? Yeah, sure. All right, that money piece, James, that's right. A um, little bit about why listen to me. So just want to talk for a moment about my journey and, and why this is pertinent. So started in 2016, I did uh, Get Found Madison. We were an SEO company here based in Madison and uh, really focused on SEO and Google ads and things like that. Within a year, I was tempted and I bought my friend's e-commerce business, Splendid Beast, and we sold custom oil paintings of people's pets. And you'll see some funny examples of those later. Um, having done e-commerce, I was like, you know, let's really niche into e-commerce. Let's go that way. And my team and I kind of pivoted and we became Caravan Digital. And I started a podcast called What's Working in E-Commerce, which is on YouTube and podcast players. And then just this year, took on a business partner and we've molded our agencies together. We've merged together and we are now Asymmetric Marketing. And you can find us at asymmetric.pro. So if you're like, why is he talking about these different things? What's, what's nice is now that Get Found Madison is not my main brand and I don't own Splendid Beast anymore, I can draw from those and share things kind of open kimono, like, here you go, here's how I did things, versus a lot of the work we do for clients, because as a sensitive, I can't always share all the how-tos, so I really like I really like being able to share case studies like this, and I'm excited to show you a bit of what we did with Get Found Madison, because some of this I've never talked about in public before. All right, so on that piece for Get Found Madison, one of the major ways that we had business was we ranked for SEO companies in Madison, Wisconsin. So I mentioned I started in uh, June 2016, and within a year, we were number one for SEO company. And I was in the six years that followed. So I did this for seven years, and we pretty well stayed up there. Now, every time you search on Google, depending on where people are at on the maps and things like that, they may see different things. But in general, this was a serious, serious moneymaker for me. And it was either people were coming in, and I was getting leads every week and talking with them, right? Or um, other pe I would meet people at events and things like this this way. And they would say, how do I know you're any good? Everybody's hitting us up for SEO. We're getting six calls a day. We're getting emails from India. Like people are getting hit up all the time about this. And it was kind of a nice thing to say, I don't know, look, look for an SEO company, see what comes up, right? And so I want to talk about how we did this and how you can do something similar for your own business. And then for Splendid Beast, um, it's like we're a little cut off there. So it's like we, when I bought this e-commerce business, it was SplendidBeast.com, and it was built on Weebly. My friend had built it on that, if anybody knows that one. And I was like, no, 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 we got to get this puppy on WordPress. And by the way, we're going to really optimize the heck out of it because SEO was kind of my secret sauce. So we, at one point, we got to number one in the U.S. for dog paintings, and I'll talk about how we did that. So that's me. I'm now a partner at Asymmetric Marketing. Um, we got a team of 14 full-time digital marketers spread all over the world. So love digital marketing. I mentioned the podcast, what's working in e-commerce. Um, love speaking. This is my favorite thing right now. I've been so pumped for this. So I'm 
thank you so much for being here and thanks for checking us out. Love to do in-person workshops as well and then I turn those in-person workshops into courses and I'll talk about that too. All right, so how does Google determine rankings? How do they, how do they know what, what, what is that number one run? You know, what, what are the top 10 on page one and then what's that number one? Anybody know? Feel free to shout things out, James. Links, Links matter. What is, what's a link? From another site to yours? That's good. What else? So, um, how many people visit your site? Yeah, that's a good idea. Engage, like, is, do you already have traffic going there? I would say engagement. Are there people using it? Yeah. Perfect. I think we, I think we got it. That's great. I would say relevance. So Google is trying to make their users happy. So just to be clear, like Google has all these things like we use Google maps and Google calendar and Gmail and on and on and on. Right. But Google makes their money from the ads that show at the top. So if people ever stopped using Google, that would be a problem because they're one of the biggest companies in the world. And that's how they make most of their revenue. Right. By those little ads that show up at the top and people would stop using Google if the results weren't relevant. So that's, that's exactly right. It's like, Whatever they show you, whatever that searcher is trying to do, if they're trying to get information, if they're trying to buy something, if they're looking for a certain brand, whatever it is, Google needs to show them exactly what they're looking for. So that's relevance. Authority then is the piece James mentioned. So links is part of how they do that. And we'll talk about that. And then also we talk about are, are people already using your site? Are you getting traffic already? Do visitors click through multiple pages? That's user experience. And Google can tell, are people enjoying your website? Are they getting value out of it, right? So let's go through those one by one. Relevance, so we've got a title that shows up. It's almost like the, the front door, or the side door of what do people see on the Google results page before they click to your site, right? So that could be the title of the page or just the content on the page, right? How about the related concepts you mentioned, right? Google needs to understand, am I looking for apples like Honeycrisp, I can eat an apple, or am I looking for Apple computers, right? Like, And one of the ways it does that is just this sort of synonyms and related phrases mentioned on the page. We talk about links as well, so that hyperlink text, when we click a little blue or whatever color link that takes us to another website or another page, Google's actually indexing that piece and mapping all that out and saying, okay, someone's saying this is a guide to AI SEO tools over here, and I click and go to it, that must be what this page is about, right? So when you put information in your link like that, Google and search engines like Bing and Yahoo, which have now copied Google's algorithm, that's how they work, right? How about the authority piece? This is what James talked about. So this is page rank. This is how Google got ahead of the others initially. Is it anybody here remember using search engines before Google? What did you use? Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, Yahoo, Ask Jeeves, um, Alta Vista, Doggy Pile, right? Dog Pile. Like there were all kinds of other ones. You like us. There we go. Thank you, Bill. Nice. Netscape was the browser, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. And for anyone who used these pre-Google, how were the results? How was it searching on the web? It was, it was pretty normal that you would click to page four or five to find what you needed. It's sort of, it's sort of crazy to say that now, but like in our lifetimes that has happened or in some of our lifetimes, right? So how did Google get so much better? Well, there's this whole thing in academic papers. And you think like, what does this have to do with anything? So if someone cites your scientific study more than others, it's probably a pretty important paper. And so the founders of Google took that idea and said, all these internet pages are being spun up and all these websites are coming out. How do we organize that information and quickly get people what they need? We're gonna use that same logic. So if a lot of people point to one page here, right? Like if this is, let's call this the New York Times or what, what have you, right? We have a lot of different sites pointing to articles on New York Times, right? And if Egan is just starting a little blog down here and he's just like an island in the ocean and there's no flights coming in, right? Like it's probably not a very important post. It's just Egan's blog. But then up here is kind of interesting. Let's say someone on the other side publishes a major study, right? Like a big like primary source of information comes out and the New York Times links to it. So that's only one link, but it's quite a powerful link. It's like if the New York Times is linking to you or whatever the major site is, that seems to be pretty important. 
So there's this sense of quantity, but then there's also quality of how much authority do you have? And it's just sort of a proxy. Lots of links pointing to your domain or to your page. It's a proxy for authority. And so this is where PageRank came from. And this is how Google got so much better. And suddenly we didn't have to jump back to page four or five anymore. The authority piece. So links from others, you know, other websites to your domain. That's your whole, that's your whole site. It's yourbusiness.com, right? Socialmediabreakfast.com. And, and then it's like links from other websites to your specific pages within it. So how do I know this is an important page? Well, other people are linking to this article, right? That's the idea. Who works at a local business, like local service business, anything like that? All right, I see a few hands. So this is your thumbprint, is your name, address, and your phone number. And so when we do local SEO for clients, we wanna make sure they've got the same business name on Google and Facebook and Yelp and on and on and on, right? The name, address, phone number is the thumbprint. We want it to match exactly down to the comma if possible. Traditional credentials, I say question mark, question mark, because Google doesn't necessarily know. So you might be writing a blog and say you're an MD or a PhD or what, whatever, letters after your name. You could just say that, but is Google able to algorithmically verify that actually you have those credentials? It's a little harder, right? And so this other sort of proxy method of links and citations, meaning mentions of your business name, is more how they do it. How about the user experience piece? How might Google know whether your website is a good user experience for people? Reviews, speed. Reviews. that's interesting. Speed, time on site. Were there others? Security. Hmm. Is it secure? That's good, is there the little lock up in the corner? Good point. So again, it's worth thinking about. Google makes all its money from Google Ads, basically, right? But they have Chrome. They have Google Analytics, they have Android phones, they have YouTube, right? And so you can embed videos on your site and things like that. And then the PageSpeed Insights they, they own as well. So that's quite a bit of information if you think about you're on your Android phone, you're using Chrome, you're using Google itself, and then you know if you have Google Analytics running on the, on the site, they know, they know basically everything, right? Like they know how quick is that page loading, how many pages are you going to, what actions are you taking on there? Are you going back, et cetera, et cetera? So how does Google then evaluate that user experience? We talked about engagement on the site, right, in the pages. So what about signs of poor UX? What might they say, okay, this is not a good site? Slow. Slow pages, that's right. What else? Away. Bouncing, yeah. So in the new GA4, it actually got rid of bounces, but the idea was you go to one page and you just kind of close it. like. There was, I guess we went to that page, there was nothing much to do, right? And the worst one that SEOs talk about is pogo sticking. This is, we do a Google search, I click to the result, didn't get what I needed, I hit back in the browser and I go and look at other results. There's perfectly reasonable reasons to do this. If you might be looking at reviews for a product, you might just be trying to get different information. But in general, if you didn't answer the user's query, uh, Google will potentially penalize you in the future and so there, that, that piece I showed of here's the ranking, but it's like there's almost no such thing as a, I have a number one ranking and I'm there all the time. Google's always experimenting and moving things up and down, right? So how can you actively improve your SEO? This is what it entails. This is the sort of work you know, I did for my websites and for our clients. So we research keywords. We create pages based on the keyword research. We optimize said pages. And then if we're a local business, we need to optimize our Google profile excuse me, our Google profile or our Google My Business listing, we need to get reviews. I would say we need to respond to reviews as well. Any technical issues, we gotta fix them, right? We need to blog and, and create content, and we need to build, and I would say earn links from other websites. So this is SEO, this is it. It's like this big complicated thing, and I will say, as, a, as, a, as an SEO agency owner, it was kind of complicated. If you're running Facebook ads, or if you're doing email marketing, or you're building WordPress websites, there's always complexity, there's always different skills involved. But as we get into this, you'll see, it's kind of different parts of the brain and it's almost different people that you need doing these different parts if you're building out a team. So something to think about. Keyword research, what does that entail? We're gonna brainstorm ways that people search for what we offer. It could be products, services, in some cases experiences, right? We're gonna review our historical SEO data. We're gonna steal ideas from competitors, which is always fun. We can use online tools to find more ideas. We can get the estimated search volume. So think of the old days before Google. How did people find businesses, by the way? Yellow pages. 
phone book, yellow pages, right? And imagine it's whatever year, 1987, and people were checking the yellow pages for, you know, uh, an HVAC provider, right? Local HVAC service. You know, how valuable would it have been or might it have been to know how many times a month do people open that page and look for HVAC? That's kind of the idea, right? It's that same thing of, I need this, but instead of reaching for the phone book now, I'm just typing it in and we can actually get the data. And we're selecting targeted key phrases, all right? So here we go, this is Splendid Beast. And so I just own this for a period and I, I sold it during COVID, but these are actual handmade oil paintings of people's pets. So it's like they send in their pet and it's like, here we go, give me, give me an actual painting. And it like takes many weeks to dry and then we've got to ship it to people and it's like, it can, it can be framed or gallery wrapped or what have you, right? So this is it. So what I did when I bought this for my friend Ben, who had the old site on Weebly, is like, one, we got to get this puppy on WordPress. And two, when I do the keyword research, I'm going to go down a long list, right? And I'm going to say, do I want it? Do I want it? Do I want it? So I've already filtered to these are the ones, yes, I want to target, right? I see the keywords. I see the average monthly searches, right? And then I, I pick out the pages. And so Ben, my friend, he just kind of had four pages on the site. It was like, we do pet paintings, use the contact form, let me know if you want some, you know? <laughs> it was like very simple version one, right? And so for me, I knew, well, geez, custom pet portrait itself gets 5,400 a month, custom dog portrait, 1,900. We need dog painting page, cat painting page, et cetera. And you can kind of see here, not every phrase needs its own, but each concept needs its own. So pet paintings can get its own page, that can be the home page but we need to have a dog paintings page, we need to have a cat paintings page, and the dog paintings page can include dog art, dog portraits, et cetera, et cetera, right? And let me tell you, we would highlight the ones we needed. So did you know that 320 people a month search for ferret painting? <laughs> this is a, there's some business opportunities in here, guys. I just wanted to see, hamster painting, chicken portrait. There's a lot, there's a lot of opportunity here. So I want you to see, yeah. Same idea, so I'd sort it like this, dog paintings page, and then I kind of sort the other way and I say, okay, what phrases are we targeting on the dog paintings page? Dog painting, dog portraits, dog art, custom dog portraits, yada, yada, yada. And I might try to work these in or concepts related to them on that page. This is kind of a lot of phrases to do on one page, but Google's smart too. It's, it's, we've come a long way where you don't have to have every single one of these verbatim on the page, particularly as you go down the list. But your top ones, the most searched ones, can be worth optimizing for, right? So here's what we did. Spunbeast.com slash dog paintings. Nice, clean URL, no gobbledygook, no like long, 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 like letters and numbers, yada, yada, just like nice and clean, right? Set up that, set up that page, kind of went on and on. Like it, we're a little wordy, right? Like we just want to see some images, but I'm feeding Google some, some words as well. I'm just gonna let you guys take some of these in because these are all handmade oil paintings <laughs> of people's dogs. What's the average price of one of these? Yeah, this was, I think they're around 200, 250 now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like this big, hang on your wall, memorialize your pet. I've got one that we love it. It's hanging in our There we go, Josh Clemens. <laughs> I shouldn't have sold the business. I got, th things got too nuts during COVID. I was like, all right, I gotta pick a lane. I, I stay with the agency, but. Wouldn't you, you know, you get wistful. You're like, oh, that was a good business. <laughs> All right. And within a while, we were number one in the U.S. for dog paintings. Again, don't quote me. I don't know if that's the case now. I don't know what the new owner's doing on it. But, and we, we ranked in the, the images, including someone's dog is a T-Rex <laughs> and girl with a pearl earring. So it's like there are these different, <laughs> there are these different, um, you know, we talked about features on the results page. So it's not even just the normal search results, right? It's like, what, what else is showing up when you search for that and how can you get in there? All right, so what goes on the pages? You've probably seen this list before, but it's like that actual title, what does the blue link say on Google? The description is, is helpful because it's gonna encourage people to click that link. What about your headers? What about your paragraph content? Don't forget to rename your images and compress them and make them smaller. Add your image alt attributes to describe it so people have, um, um, you know, visual impairments that have special browsers and it'll tell them what is this image. It's also telling Google, what is this image, right? Embedded YouTube videos, Google owns YouTube, so why not have those on there? And then there's a whole element of links of, if there's inbound links from other websites or even other pages on your site, you know, what's in that blue text or what's in that hyperlink is 
feeding Google information. And then outbound links, if you have a long resource of, let's say, you know, SEO tools, AI tools that, that help with SEO, it's like, we might want to link out to some of those tools and Google's going to see, all right, this is a resource page. Good, right? If we have a local business, we want to verify that thing. They send us a postcard and say, yes, this is actually us. We need to upload actual images. You can add videos and posts. You want to make sure to get your category right. And by the way, if you have happy customers and clients, have them leave you Google reviews. And after they leave you a review on Google, respond to it because that's feeding Google more information. And then building out your business listings on Yelp, et cetera, et cetera, right? Technical issues, let's talk quickly on those. James mentioned a few. So we, we want them nice and fast. The pages should be quick. Get it around two seconds. Two second load times are challenging on WordPress. WordPress has a bunch of stuff in the back end, so there's, there's always trade-offs with every platform, right? But get them as fast as you can and you know, get a technical developer involved. Make them secure, so it's HTTPS. This used to be just if you were, you know, if, if people were buying things on your site. Now it's basically a ranking signal. And so make sure your site's secure, make sure it's great on mobile, make sure there's no broken links or missing pages. And I talked about the hideous URL structures. Get those out of there, get them nice and clean. All right, why would blogging help with SEO? Yep, you use more keywords in the, in the blog, that's good. Why else? Authority. Say more about that. Uh, just showing that you know what you're talking about. You deserve to be you know, listened to. Love it. Show your authority, but you're you're sharing your expertise. Yeah. It's a quick, easy way to keep your site like really updated. Keep that site updated. Yep. Love it. That's great. So uh, some reasons I came up with. It demonstrates experience, expertise, authority, and trust. This is something Google actually talks about now in their content guidelines. And this will come up as we talk about what can AI do, what can people do, right? Is that experience and that expertise, even as we're, we're going to be using AI more and more for these pieces, it's, the AI is not necessarily going to have those pieces. And so this is, this, is what, this is what you can add to the picture as a person, right? Um, rank for more informational queries. We talked about more keywords, right? Earn more backlinks. What about that? You have a great resource and other people link to your resource and that, that blows up your balloon, right? That, that those are flights coming into your island, whatever, whatever metaphor you want on page rank, right? Build internal links. So you've got service pages, you've got product pages. We want to link to those, right? So we want to see those. And then, um, yeah, Google can recall, index your site. It's a reason for Google to come check it out. So what do we blog about and what do we create content about? We're at Social Media Breakfast. You guys are probably good on content. What are, what are some ideas? FAQs. FAQs, Josh, good. Craig says customer problems. That's a good one. Yep, our own experiences. All good. All good. Yeah, common questions, FAQs. What about just how to's? Uh, what about how to shop for your product or services? There's always this thing of why are we different? How do we differentiate? What's important? Educate you know, the market on why they should choose you, right? Case studies can be valuable. What about industry trends and changes? All the above. There's, there's no shortage of things. This should not even be a problem. And by the way, now you can use ChatGPT to come up with all kinds of topics, right? So how else can you create content? I just want to throw this out there. So obviously you guys are doing social media content. YouTube videos, is, YouTube is kind of in this funny in between where it's the number two search engine, but it's kind of social media as well. Like people get content recommendations on it, like a Netflix. So it's, it's sort of this hybrid mix. So I'm calling it out separately. And then podcasts, and you can put your podcast on YouTube now as well, right? And so as we think content, we don't even just have to think this is this is a typed out written thing. This can be, you know, this can be audio, this can be video, this can be what have you, right? All right, how do we build and earn backlinks from other websites? Why would other websites link to us? Good You've got good content, they want to link to it. That's good. Information. Research. Say more about that, Greg. You are talking about a topic, and you've got like maybe some quantitative data that's you know, showing a trend or something like that. And they might want to quote it, cite it in their own articles. Yeah, you've got individual research. You've got your own data points that other people don't have. It's uh, that's great. It's a primary source. So I say one-way links because as soon as I talk about this, sometimes people are like. Ooh, I could come up with a scheme and my friend could link to me and I could link to that. It's like, no, Google's like what? Between one and $2 trillion in value. 
Like, don't, don't try to outsmart it. Like, just stop. <laughs> don't do that, right? So PR and publicity, if you get media mentions, if you get people writing about you, like, have them linked to your site. Makes sense, right? How about just partnerships? How about you speak at Social Media Breakfast and you like wrangle them until they make that a live link on the site, right? I get crazy about it, guys. In the, in the seven and a half years I've been doing this, I'll be a fiend. I will email people every week, day after day, whatever I need to of like, hey, I spoke at your event, don't forget to link to us. Like I'm, I'm an insane person about it and you should be too. Testimonials, what about you leave a testimony or a review for their app, their tool, their service, and you get, a, you know, like there's a picture of you there, and you're talking about how great they are, why not a little link back to your site, right? So you're, it's like, how do we do win-win like that, right? Guest blogging, writing articles, right? All of the above. And responding to reporters and bloggers. So we all have our favorite methods. I would also say going on podcasts, this is a, this is a great one. So many podcasts, they'll have their own site, they're putting on their blog, and they can link to you as the resource. If you are the expert or someone from your company was the expert who came on, why not do this, right? So how not to build links? There's this whole world of white hat, black hat, gray hat. And what, what, was, what, is, what is white hat and what is black hat? What does that mean? Yeah. Doing it the ethical way versus the kind of underhanded way. Yeah, and it depends on who you ask, ethical or not. I would even say it's, does Google approve of it or not? <laughs> so, and it, it, we can say what we want about Google and big tech. In many ways, Google has made the internet better. Uh, websites have to work better now on smartphones. They have to be faster. They have to be secure. Like every time Google adds one of these ranking factors, it's, it's sort of making the internet better for a lot of us. So that's good. Yeah, so, so this whole thing of if suddenly we're just gonna buy a bunch of links, that whole page rank thing is gonna go out the window. It's not gonna work anymore, right? And so for years and years, SEO was almost this like dirty word. There was, it was like, sketchy dudes in a basement just like buying all these sites buying all these links from russia or whatever it is right that was the, that was the thought that's what seo was and google got smart there's always this cat and mouse game and when you're up against a trillion dollar company like you're going to have problems doing that and so if google found out you were doing this they would just yank you from the index you just disappeared you were gone right these days it's more just it's more likely that anything sketchy you're doing it just doesn't help so it's changed a little bit Reciprocal links, we talked about, I link to you, you link to me, like don't do that. Link schemes of, okay, we got a third site, I'll go to this one and it'll go to me, and it, no, 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 no. You need one-way links, right? Private blog networks, PBNs, this is a, have you encountered these or you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, this is like people buy up these old domains, they, they're pointing this and that, they're doing all kinds of sketchy stuff, just skip it, okay? And, and there are SEOs out there that would just be like, no, dude, this is SEO, this is, this is what you do. So when I say white hat, I'm saying, Google approved, don't get your site banned, or don't do things that don't even help you anymore. Yeah. Can you talk more about the reciprocal link? So like, yeah. if you're in an area where you do a lot of referring across a network of providers, for example, yeah. with different specialties, does that fall under that category, or how can you, can you do it in a way that is helpful and doesn't need to be? Yeah, I'll repeat it just for online folks. So what about reciprocal links? What if we've got kind of a network where we're helping each other and things like that, actual in real life, like we have business partnerships or we have referral relationships. There are other reasons to link to people and for them to link to you. And so that's totally fine. But if it's, it's basically, Google is looking at those links and that kind of map and that network and it's saying, does New York Times link to you? If so, we inflate the bubble, it's more valuable, higher authority. But if a bunch of medium small sites are kind of linking to each other, it's probably a wash. It's not going to help your SEO is generally what I say. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but that's that's kind of the simple version, right? You won't necessarily hurt it, but it might not help. Right, it, yeah, I don't think it'll, it's not gonna hurt your SEO to have reciprocal links, but if you're thinking, hey, we're all linked to each other, we're gonna, like, rising tide's gonna lift all boats, not the case in this case, right? I wanna talk, this is, this is what made the difference for us, and this is how we got there for Get Found Madison, so I just, I wanna, like, go into this, and I promise we're gonna talk more on AI. So crazy powerful links, here we go. This is the, this is the thing, we want these. We want the biggies to point to us. Everybody agreed and on board about this? This is the goal. So we use SEO tools. Some of these are expensive. We use Ahrefs, right? And this is 200 some bucks a month. Like it's not cheap, but hey, we're an SEO agency. People are paying us to do it, might as well, right? And what this gives us then is an estimate on how powerful, how big is that balloon? How good are those links? And this is a logarithmic scale. What's a logarithmic scale mean? It goes up by 
does it by a factor of 10 every time. So remember the Richter scale? So if we have a three earthquake, it's like we're shaking a little bit. If we have a four earthquake, we're shaking 10 times as much. And by the time we get up to five, six, seven, it's like hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands times as powerful, right? So it's not, it's not just a linear thing. It's like a, this is a big deal. So if you're starting, you start from zero. And sometimes client, sometimes local businesses come to us and they've had a website for two decades and they're like at not even one. They're like a fraction of one because they haven't, no, nobody's pointing to their island, right? And so this, this, is, this is what, you know, it took a while to build it this basically. And you can see it over time and so on. So it's just, this is like a, this is a proxy for what is Google seeing? How valuable is my site, right? And what you can do is plug in your site or plug in your competitor's site, look at the backlinks and say, how powerful are these? And so I mentioned everybody has their own sort of method. Some people like to go on guest posts. Some people like to do outreach to thousands of sites and say, we'll write you a guest post. In my case, I like help a reporter out. And so a lot of the most powerful ones, and if you have Ahrefs or another tool like this, you can see what I had to get from Madison and see where the actual links are. So just a reminder, so if you can get a DR90, that's 100,000 times more powerful than just a DR40. This is how big is the site? How much authority do they have? So here was my favorite source. Help a reporter out, you know, helperreporter.com, call it Haro, and it'll send you a digest. It'll send you more emails than you ever wanted to see, but three times a day, you can get a digest of things that reporters and journalists and bloggers are looking to know, right? I'm gonna keep moving around, sorry, Faith. And so here's a, here's a digest, you can click to them. Here's what they look like. I saw one from Lead Pages. Who knows what Lead Pages is? Yeah, what does that do? What are they? Easy way to create landing pages. It's a landing page tool. It's like a SaaS tool, right? And I was like, ooh, that seems like a good one. So sometimes it'll even say what the media outlet is. Looking for answers to the question, what's your top tip for generating real estate leads online? Hey, I guess I've done that before. Here you go, I respond. We did this back, it was called Google AdWords. We ran it right to the listings, yada, yada, here we did. And then like, I have a headshot of myself. I say who I am in the company. I have all my links. I like always answer their question very precisely and make sure I've got it. And I would just do this every day for many years, right? And often you don't hear anything back, but every now and then they reach back out and they're like, hey, we featured you, there you go, leadpages.net. You're like, .net, how good could this be, right? <laughs> Around Google Ads directly to listing pages. There we go. It's got my old picture. It's got this little link, owner at getfoundmassin.com. It's just a it's just a branded anchor text. That's fine. 85. 85. And so sometimes you get nothing. Sometimes you get a 10 or a 15 or a 12. And sometimes you get an 85. So this is this is what I did. And so I would read this every day for our clients and for my businesses and respond. And I've got a free guide for you guys. This is my first ever QR code, I'm sure. I just want you to know. <laughs> so it's called Successful Haro Pitches that led to SEO backlinks. And also, you'll get the slides for this later, so if you just want to click the link there too. Successful Haro Pitches. So that one's included in there as well as some others that are in the 70s, 80s, 90s. And it'll just give you a sense of what to say to folks. And it sort of depends what industry you're in. If you're selling CBD anything, you could just respond to these journalists all day long. That could be your full-time job. Sometimes when we have more, you know, blue-collar industry clients, like sometimes it's harder. So you gotta, you gotta think creatively of how, how do I pitch myself and my clients to these. All right, SEO entails, keyword research, doing the map, optimizing the pages and the Google listing and the technical stuff. And I just totally hit something I shouldn't have. There we go. And blogging and building links, yada, yada. That's SEO. Great. How come we're all here though? AI, oh yeah. How is AI changing SEO? Don't you hate when someone's like, and then I asked AI and here's what it said. So I won't do that to you, but it's worth asking. So just to be clear, Google has been using AI for years and I haven't even talked about Amazon and Amazon has SEO inside that search box too. And it's all AI. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what they're doing, right? Now people do ask ChatGPT or Claude or the other ones, Bard, um, questions, and at least for informational queries, I want to ask, have you shopped for anything using ChatGPT so far? Anybody? Okay, interesting. Not happening yet. So it's more informational queries, I would say. And by the way, you can, I'm going to use the word drafting the blog posts. We could just 
take what ChatGPT or another tool says and plug it into the blog and post it, depending on how much we care. But I think there should be an editing step, repurposing old content, repurposing audio, video, social media, and vice versa going across is good. Some technical issue, SEO issues, and then link building we'll talk about. All right, here we go. How are we doing on time, everybody? Terrible as usual. All right. <laughs> issues too. There we go. We got there. Okay. Quick, quick word on rank brain. There's a guide in here if you ever want to check it out, but it's basically all those factors we talked about. What about links? What about blogs? What about technical stuff? It's almost like Google has AI now that just does that on a per search basis. And so there's this whole issue of long tail keywords. So <laughs> Google has however many four to eight to eight and a half billion searches a day and 15% of them they've never seen before, particularly as people are searching with voice and things like that, right? And, and home, you know, AirPods and what have you, right? Home pods. It's like, this is changing all the time. And so Google is figuring out what does this person mean with this search we've never seen before, even though we've seen trillions of searches now. And then it's like updating this algorithm. Okay, when someone searches for something with this intent, we're gonna tweak the results and do this. So in some cases, backlinks matter more. In some cases, the content matters more. In some cases, maybe the on-site stuff and the, and the page speed matters more. That's it. Okay, how about chat GPT? We're sort of hearing that like, as long as anyone has been doing SEO, every year someone says SEO is dead. So SEO is always dead and SEO is always coming back. So is chat GPT and the other tools like it eating into, in, into Google's usage. That's their, that's their big cash cow. This, is, this has been the golden goose for them, right? So interestingly, Gartner is predicting 25% fall in search by 2026. And if you read further into it, they're like, oh yeah, and people are gonna be pretty much done on social media in a couple of years. Who knows? I think we're all like, the there's so much changing, the future is so uncertain. What is the future? It's like, no one knows. No machine knows, no person knows, but it's interesting to play it out, right? So just to get some data as best I could on this, last 30 day visits, starting February two, er, from February two, ChatGPT total visits to the site for a month, 1.6 billion. Not too shabby for something that just came out a year or something ago, right? But Google, 84 billion. So we got, we got a ways to go. And even as you look at Amazon, WhatsApp, et cetera, et cetera, it's like, basically, ChatGPT is the lowest one on the list still, but will that change? And are people just using the other ones? Are they gonna use Google's? Are they gonna use the other ones? So we're, we're not there yet, but it is quite interesting. And I will say for myself, oops, sorry everyone, hit the mic. Like for myself, uh, I've got the, if, if you've got the ChatGPT app on your phone, you can just talk to it. But just ask it questions and it answers. And it's way better than Siri ever was. And in many cases, better than Google does. So queries per day, Hard to come by, but we're on the order. I, I meant to make this a quiz thing, but we're going faster. So <laughs> it's something like 10 million. And by the way, so it's, there's this whole thing of, is the AI hallucinating? Is it making things up? So if you ask ChatGPT, how many a day do you get? They say, we don't tell you. OpenAI is not releasing that, look somewhere else. Okay, I Google it. And I Google it and someone just says it in a blog and you're like, okay, where'd they get that information? And you're like, they just, they said that. And everyone else said it, and you're like, where'd they get it? Oh, they got it from the other one. So like, who knows what the real number is, but it's on this order of, and Google around eight and a half billion. So it's not there yet, but could, could these numbers switch? I don't doubt that ChatGPT and others will keep growing, right? Um, I just found out Bard is now called Gemini. Who knew that? All right, we, got, we had two people, three people. So that was, this was Google's, Bard was Google's answer, right? So Google answers back with their own AI, and you can check it out. And it might look kind of familiar. It's basically Google's chat GPT. And it's not too bad either. Um, hit, so if when you are logged into Chrome or when you're logged into Google, hit the little labs. Is it, is it, everybody else have this too? Have you guys seen this? And so what you do is you turn it on. So it can help you talk to a live representative if you want them to like do some chat or like book an appointment for you. You can do the search actual in Google. We'll talk about that. And then even while you're browsing, it can help you just summarize stuff. Bing has its own thing too, right? That's similar, okay? So when you do best AI tools for SEO, we now get this at the top if we've turned on our little beaker, right? Our, our little lab thing. And so what is interesting, it's spit it out. For years, there's been this whole thing about zero, uh, 
click searches. So with those informational queries, Google is just giving you the content and it kind of, uh, it kind of rankles bloggers like me because we went to the trouble of writing this and then Google, Google just gets the credit and says, here's the answer, right? But there is this thing of now they are citing their sources that it's pulling from. And so what does SEO look like in 2024 and beyond? It could be, how do we feed the algorithm and get a little cred up in the upper right? Yeah, uh, ads in here. Yeah. So I have not seen ads inside the generative AI thing, but sometimes you'll see them above and below. Yeah, good question. And that's a, that's to the point, you know. And in, in in theory, people are only wanting to run ads on commercial searches. If it's an informational search like this, unless you're selling an AI tool, you probably wouldn't run an ad on that. Yeah, good point. So that's a it's it's not dead yet, but it's changing. It's like. Instead of 10 results, it's almost like we're kind of getting three and people are getting a little preview of them anyway. But same, same sort of thing applies. You, you structure your content, you answer people's questions, you're obviously blogging to get that, right? How about blogging with AI? Who's done this already? Quite a few. All right, so you guys add, shout it out, add to this. So I'm saying with ChatGPT or Claude or now Gemini apparently, brainstorming keywords and topics, phenomenal. Just create a topic cluster and a topic plan this is a thing I think HubSpot originally popularized is like, if I'm writing about SEO, I'm going to have an S I'm going to have a keyword research post. I'm going to have a technical SEO post. I'm going to have a blogging post. I might have a whole Haro sub post, right? And then I've got link building. So whatever the topics are in your industry and what you're writing about, get those topic clusters and link, 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 link between them, right? Maybe you have your ultimate guy that has everything. And then you've got the short posts in there, right? And chat GPT or whatever can help you plan these out. You can write and optimize the draft. I'm just using that word draft because I don't want you to just grab it and throw it in if you can resist, right? And it's always good to say, what's the audience we're writing for? What's the perspective? What kind of tone should we take? Is this informal, formal, right? And then how long should it be? There's this whole thing about ranking at the top on Google correlates with you need at least one to two to more than 2,000 words on a blog post. It's not this little thing we crap out anymore. It's not a 300 word wonder. It's like, we need in-depth content, right? Revise and edit, just throwing that in there. Don't just draft, don't just do it. And then don't forget, experience, expertise, authority, trust. So if I can throw in some case studies about Splendid Beast and GetFound Madison and clients we've worked with, that's gonna be good because whatever language learning model is pulling from, it's not gonna have those real life specifics. So throw those puppies in. You, human, who's human here? Humans, we've got a couple humans. This is your job, okay? This used to all be your job. Now this is mostly your job. Good, glad we talked about that. I'm, I'm hanging here, we're almost there. Where are we at? Other AI tools, okay. AI people, or SEO people just go crazy for tools. And I apologize in advance. I'm not gonna go through each one, don't worry. But there are many to check out and it's worth, you can watch YouTube reviews of them, you can get the free trial and check them out. It's worth playing with them. Many are related to this blogging piece, but then there are others that, that do other things. Let me just show a couple examples of what's out there. So SEMrush, this is another tool similar to Ahrefs, right? And they've got this one now called Content Shake. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm even doing the, I wanna write the same article on different tools and see which one gives me the best. So in this case, best top AI tools to boost SEO, put it in there, here's my keywords, okay, here's related topics, there you go. It throws in some images, it's given me headers, it's given me paragraphs, it says it's 70% good and it's 1500 words. I read through it and I was kinda of like, meh. I'm not saying this wasn't bad. I think the idea is this gets you started and then you're adding experience, expertise, authority, trust, right? So great starting point, more than we ever had before AI, not to complain, but then we'll look at another one. Surfer SEO, who's used this one? Oh, all right. All right, we got a new one. And coming from ChatGPT, coming from everything, it's like, I'm an old curmudgeon. I was the editor of my college newspaper. Like I fancy myself a writer. So I'm like, AI hey, can't write like me. AI is like a B student, right? So I'm all skeptical every time I see these. So this is Surfer. Similar thing, best AI SEO tools, gives you the cluster. 
I say, okay, great. I want to do AI SEO tools. It says, okay, here's a bunch of keywords that are all related. So this might be the master one. This might be the ultimate guide, sort of longer post, right? It's throwing those up there. And this is a key moment. This is this whole thing of what did everyone else write? What's already on the Google result page? Because somehow I got to be better. We don't just write, 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 hope that works. It's like, what's already there and how do I make it better? The AI is actually doing it in this case. Here's the top 10. Here's what they have. Here's the rating we give each of them. Here's how many words they have. All right, here we go. Skyscraper technique, who's heard of that? Yeah, what is the skyscraper technique? It's basically, we gotta be taller than the others, right? So there's already on page one, there's already so many guides, there's so many guides to AI SEO tools. If I'm gonna write one and publish one and rank, it's got to be better than what's already out there. In many cases, that's more in depth. Maybe that's with video embeds. Maybe that's with actual reviews. Maybe that's with examples. Whatever it is, you got to go. You got to do more. So you'll get the you'll get the slides. You can read this for yourself. Got to confess, I was blown away. Took a few minutes. Take, takes a little while. It's not instantaneous. Chat GPT. There you go. Took five or ten minutes wrote 2,600 words, talks about all the keywords and included and ranked for and optimized for, and like, there you go. So again, add your expertise, authority, trust, right? Experience, but not bad at all. And it's like, okay, that was a $20 credit to do that. And you kind of get going like, not another tool, like not another 20 bucks. You know, like, guys, I'm here to tell you, and anybody who's doing SEO, Greg, anyone else, how much have you paid bloggers to write blog posts? Yeah, yes, yeah. so you can get this moment like not another tool. I have paid people that I've met through social media breakfast five to seven hundred dollars for one blog post, and that's what the price was back then, and that was fine. Like we made that work. This is this is changing it, right? Of oh, a lot of the work happens here, and then you're revising and editing, repurposing content. We're almost there, folks. Audio. Video, writing, we talked about this. We've got our YouTube videos. We've got our social media videos. We've got our audio podcast. We've got our blog. How do we go from each one to each one, right? That's what I would suggest. So um, for my podcast, we use Riverside FM. It's just, it's built for podcasting. It's a little better than using Zoom. It's worth checking out. And now it has AI where, okay, we're gonna give you clips. Okay, we can just edit it. So each one of these things was a job. I would hire someone in the Philippines of like, edit this thing for me, give me the show notes, put it on YouTube, put it on Libsyn so that it's a podcast and it's like, I've still got a helper now, but like they're using the tools, right? Descript.io, just video editing. So if you don't want to use Premiere or Final Cut Pro or whatever, whatever it is, it's like, it just gives you the transcript of what you said, you highlight over it like Google Doc or Microsoft Word, you delete it and it cuts that part of the video. So it's like total, total dummy proof video editing. Pod squeeze has been a game changer. So coming up with the show, we're at we're just about at 100 episodes on what's working in e-commerce, and it almost killed me. But we're, we finally got it down, and it's like this tool, 20 bucks a month, listens to the audio, creates the timestamp, the show notes. It'll write your it'll write your LinkedIn post about it. It'll write write your Facebook post about it. It'll write the email marketing and the description and everything. Totally worth it. Speechify. There's other tools that do this too, but it's like okay, we've got a blog post now, how do we go to audio, right? And OpenAI and others are now coming out with, we've got text, how do we go text to video? And so there are some options with that. I'll update these slides as we, as we find more and more, but there you go. Real quick, link building with AI. So those people are doing cold pitches, hey, I could write a little post, you know, I could write an article for you. Could help there, right? Help me on the pitches, right? Potentially help me do research to find sites to re reach out to that accept guest blog posts, right? How about write the guest blog post article? Heck yeah, definitely. I, 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 I'm still working on this piece, but Zapier can, can integrate with OpenAI. It can read your email and it can draft responses to your email. So that whole loop of I'm getting this whole digest of things that reporters and blog, bloggers want to know, get me started at least. Get me that template of okay, somebody asked about SEO, somebody asked about SEO and AI, how do we feed it some information? Let me know, first of all, that I should respond to one today and what should I say? So again, I'm gonna add my experience and my expertise in there, but get me going on that. 
And then another one, I, an interesting idea I came across is you can build your own GPTs. So there's this whole thing about free calculators. A good example I like to show is the A-B testing calculators, right? So if you've got two landing pages, one of them does better than the other, that's great, but it could be a fluke. You need to get statistical significance to know that this one actually won. So people build these A-B testing calculators and you plug in, here's how many impressions I got, here's how many conversions I got, and tell me, did I reach statistical significance? You could do the same thing in your industry, right? So create that calculator and G ChatGPT can help you make it and then you make it its own GPT. And then by the way, you're on an open AI subdomain, which is 90 some DR. So you build a valuable tool that people use, they link to the tool, you get a link from open AI, and it seems to work pretty well for the people who do it. Check that out. We're there folks. This is, again, this is fourth or fifth time I've been here. So I just wanna say thank you. Um, this has meant a lot to me. Like, SEO has really helped me and changed my life, so I want to do the same for you if I can. I've got a course, normally goes for 97 bucks. For you folks, it's free. So this is the QR code. Use SMB Mad 2024 for $97 value. Yeah, and let me know what you think. Yeah. yeah. We have a few minutes for questions. Josh goes like this, so no. Yeah. Yeah, Hero's changed recently with Decision and how it works. Can you offer any tips of how to parse those daily emails, which is unbelievably time consuming? Yeah, help a reporter out changed recently. It's tons of emails. I haven't I haven't looked at it recently, so I don't know the latest and greatest. I will say historically, in my course, I show how I set up special Gmail filters to send it to my important box if there was something I cared about. So I, would, I wouldn't get every single digest, I would only get ones that came up for keywords I cared about. So I show that in the course, and version two or 3.0 that I want to have is Zapier's gonna help me identify those and even start to draft them. And also when you Google for help a reporter out or HARO, there are other, t other systems like it too. There are other, uh, you know, other places where people are looking for sources, and so maybe we need to diversify away from HARO, but check out that part of the course for sure. Other questions? Yes. Yes, I didn't even talk about TikTok. Yeah. How does that fit into that? So Gen Z is treating TikTok like their search engine. How does that fit in? So I didn't talk about Amazon. I didn't, you know, everything I said applies to Google and Bing and Yahoo, which is good, and potentially DuckDuckGo. But each thing, you know, the App Store, the you know, your podcast player. Each little search box has its own algorithm, basically. And so this whole world of TikTok SEO, I think like that's going to become its own skill into itself. I think that's right. Um, it's, it's, it is fascinating to see, and it seems like it's commercial queries and it's informational queries in TikTok. And I'm trying to keep an eye out for that whole piece of how do, how do you do the keyword research? Where, wherever there is a search box, whether it's eBay or Amazon or whatever, it's interesting to think, I wonder where that data is and how do I get that data? And so that's something I'm watching for of, is there a tool or does TikTok ever provide you, here's how many times a month this phrase is getting searched on TikTok because that would really, that, that would point you to the gold. So TBD, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not an expert on TikTok, but I think it's that, that same thought process of wherever people are searching or wherever they're looking and getting content recommended, it's, it's valuable to know how to optimize for that. So. Great question, stay tuned. Awesome, thank you so much, Egan. We are gonna yeah. cut this off here, but if you're willing to stick around, I think folks have lots of questions. Uh, so uh, feel free to uh, mingle and chat afterwards, but we do have just a few wrap up slides so that we can make sure that you all uh, get on with your day. So uh, thank you again, Egan, for this excellent presentation. I know I learned a lot today. I hope you all are also walking away with a new nugget of information. Um, more QR codes. Uh, if you scan this QR code, you'll get links to all of this information. Here's how you can connect, get more involved. Um, if you work for, uh, you know of a local nonprofit, as we mentioned at the beginning, we shout out a nonprofit each month. Um, apply for a scholarship uh, to a, a conference that you want to go to, whether it's in person or virtual. Um, sponsor an event, volunteer, become a speaker, all kinds of great opportunities to get more involved. 
And mark your calendars. Like I said, we meet the third Wednesday of each month. And next month, we will be talking about podcasting. So join us back here. Mark your calendars for March 20. All right. And the long-awaited uh, Yola's gift card winner. Um, so today, no participation is necessary. So no worries. We are going to select our winner based on whose birthday is closest to today's event. Is anybody's birthday today? Damn. <laughs> Was anybody's birthday yesterday? Tomorrow. <laughs> okay, who has a birthday this week? You do. All right. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so um, Amelia is in the pink shirt, and she will help get you hooked up with your gift card, and she'll take a photo so that we can announce. Who hates those giveaways? We're like, did anybody actually win it? No, we're going to show that we actually gave this away to someone. Uh, so thank you all for joining us, and we hope to see you all back here next month.